Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin sayidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We shall continue. Now at this level 3. That means we had done the level, the first level Sifat, the second level Hakikat. Sifat, we talk about the probable existence. The Hakikat, the second level, we talk about the essence. The third level, which is Ma'rifat, and that we are talking about Allah. In order to know Allah, because He's unseen, invisible, the only thing that He wants us to know Him through His, the emergence of His subtle self. So we have to learn the subtle self and make comparison then we we'll learn about Allah through comparison not actual knowledge knowing him but through comparison okay so of course we learn the three steps just now The Sifat, the Hakikat, and the Marifat. When we do away the Sifat and Hakikat, then we are at the Marifat level, and that is the level of the Satu Saf. That is the one that he wants us to know. So that in comparison, we may have rough idea how Allah likes, but nothing for sure. So generally, all Sufis will say, after knowing him, then we realize we don't know him. <laughs> we see that in the later part of our lecture. Okay. But it is undeniable that he exists. So when you do away with the sifat, we you do away with the ma'akikat, now you are faced with the ma'rifat. And even you don't know, with certainty of knowledge, you have the certainty of vision, that he's there and you're looking at him even though you can't see him, the subtle self. Because the subtle self is part of God, part of Allah. The subtle self is eternal. You cannot do away with it. So everything else perish, annihilated. But his subtle self, which is his continent, remains. So when you go into the third level, the door of the third level, you had already annihilated the sifat, annihilated the essence of the hakikat. And now you are facing the subtle one, even though you can't see him. Because of certainty of knowledge, you have certainty of vision. Right? Therefore, those who are already in 
well versed with the second, first and second level. Once you enter the third level, your eyes will only see the subtle self. That is true certainty of vision because of certainty of knowledge. You may annihilate it or perish all others existent, but you can't perish or annihilate the subtle self because it's part of Allah. Okay? So, even though you see nothing, but you know you are looking at him and he is looking at you. Just like a white plastic bag. And it is expand, it, it, is, it is expanded and being tied by a rubber band. It look bloated. But you don't see anything inside the white plastic bag. But because of knowledge, you know inside there's air. When air you can see, but because you have knowledge, therefore the bloatedness of the white plastic, because there's air in that, even though you don't see it, because you have learned about it, certainty of knowledge. Therefore, with certainty, you say, certainty, you say, there is air inside the plastic, and that is certainty of vision. Okay? So when you start with the third level, you must not go back to the second and first level because it's a different football, different field, different level. This one, you enter the third, the door of the third level, your eyes only see the subtle self. Okay? So you see, and therefore, wherever you turn, there is the subtle self, the container, the subtle self, the feature, the container, or the subtle self. So you see this one? Behind this facade, everything before me. I am seeing you because the facade, you can perish it with your mind. Deny its existence. Then you know you are facing the subtle one and that you cannot deny the existence because it is eternity, eternal. But it doesn't show itself because it will destroy you of the power it has. So it remains unseen, but it's there. It's there. Because without the subtle self, then we could not exist. Okay? Because the essence that we come from, the essence is the manifestation of the subtle self. So without the subtle self, there is no essence. Without the essence, there is no other creations. So once you enter the third level, your vision must annihilate all existence before you. And when everything annihilated, you see blankness, but it cannot be blank because God exists and He's eternal and you can uh, annihilate Him. So, the first that emerged from our Lord is the its subtle self. And that's the one that when we annihilate everything else, that remains the subtle self. Because the subtle self is part of Allah. Therefore, the subtle self is, you cannot see it invisible. 
no form, no shapes, and cannot be seen with his two eyes. But you can see with certainty of vision, because you have a certainty of knowledge that everything perish that remain is my subtle self. That feature, the subtle self, remain. And therefore, even you seeing blank, but you know, behind the blank, the existence of the subtle self. You are looking at him, he is looking at you. And that is the station of a son. Those who have reached this level definitely have reached the level of a son. And therefore, wherever he turns, he has annihilated everything else. So when he entered the third level, wherever he turns, everything else perish. That remains his subtle self. That is part of Allah. And that is eternal, infinite, but invisible. But you know it's there. That's why you, wherever you turn, there is me the subtle self. But I won't show myself because the power that I have will destroy you. Even Rasulullah has said, even seeing the essence will destroy you. So it will be worse if you see the subtle self. Okay? But Although it's invisible, it doesn't want to show itself lest it destroy the whole creation. It becomes invisible, but it's there. Invisible. Okay? So once you enter the third level, everything else perish. And then you know you are facing the subtle, subtle self, which is invisible to you. Okay? But it is there because it's part of Allah and it's eternal. You can make it perish. So when you enter the third level, you see behind all this facade, all the things that before me, I'm seeing you because the facade had been annihilated, perish. And you facing him, even though you didn't see him with your two eyes. But because of knowledge, you are certain that you are facing him, even though you can't see him. And even, uh, even you look at the sky, Behind this facade, I'm seeing you. And you are seeing me, O oh Lord. But this facade are creations which you can annihilate them mentally. Okay? And then after that, you annihilate the essence mentally. Then you are faced with the invisible, which you cannot annihilate behind the invisible is the subtle self. So wherever you turn, there is me. Huh? So you, you perish everything, demolish everything, annihilate everything, but you cannot annihilate the subtle self, which is the continent, because it is eternal. Why it is eternal is part of Allah that you can annihilate. So everything else disappear and you see nothing else but the invisibility, invisibility, that is the subtle self which are hiding behind it, not showing itself, giving mercy to the creations because if it does show itself, its power will destroy everything that we'll see. Okay? So everything will perish, though then you see nothing invisible left, nothing or nothing invisible. But that invisible 
is the subtle self, which does not want to show itself lest it will destroy the creation all around it. So everything perish except is. And therefore, we come from the subtle self and we shall return to the subtle self. There is no two ways about it. You come from him, you come back to him. There is no other place you, you come from or no other place you go back, only the subtle self. Because when everything destroyed, the Amagadan, everything destroyed. And Allah said, that remain will be my subtle self. That contain and that appear, that is a subtle self. That will not be destroyed because it is eternal. It is eternal. Okay? So, you go back to him again. At the beginning, There is no form, no shape. How to know him? No information, nothing. How to know him? So in order to know him, that emerged from himself, a small niche. And that we call the subtle self. And everything come from the subtle self. Okay? And when everything perish, it will go back to the subtle self again. Now look, we are talking at the third level, not second level. So everything come from the subtle self, back to the subtle self. There is no None others except the subtle self. Okay. It's just like a spring. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. See, the, the spring, the spiral uh, spring come from the black ball down there. Everything come from the black ball. Where they say ball bearing or ball. And then everything come from it will come back to it. The black dot. Okay. It's like that. This uh, image will come back again later, a few times, to know the exact uh, impression that I want you to understand. So everything comes from the subtle self, the black dot, right? Like like this, this spiral, yeah? Come out from there, and later we'll go back to the black dot, the subtle self. So you see here, uh, this is the subtle self. Okay? It's just a, a description, subtle self. Because without the subtle self, you will not know Allah in any way. So because of the emergence of his subtle self, then we know a lot about him. That he definitely his greater was high and so on huh? really and therefore you see i'm the first because from the subtle self emerge all the other creations or manifested all the other creations so i'm the first and like you see like this spring come from the black dot so the black dot i'm the first then the spring come back to the black dot. I'm the last. 
I'm the last. Verily, it is Allah who inspired him. Righteousness and righteousness. <coughs> Now we're going to another. <coughs> just now we, 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 just now we learn to know him. To know him in the sense that when we uh, annihilate everything, that remain will be subtle self, but invisible. Okay, that part we have cleared. Huh? The next thing, this subtle self is in control. You come back to the spring again, yeah? spiral. Yeah? Everything controlled by the black dot or the subtle self. Everything controlled by it. And therefore, verily, it is Allah who inspired him righteousness and righteousness. I mean, good and bad. Allah inspired. So we go back to this, this one. You see, the, from the black dot come the goodness. From the black dot come the bad, badness, so the evil. Huh? So good and evil come from here. The subtle self. Okay. So because it is part of Allah, Allah say. It is me, because it's part of Allah, who inspired him righteousness and righteousness. That means these two, once you get rid of all the forms and shapes, all creation perish, left the subtle self, then you know that all the evil, all the kindness in creations, come from the subtle self, like the spring. Okay, from the subtle self, spring out all the goodness to creation. From the subtle self, spring out all the evil to the creation. So I inspire righteousness and uh, Righteousness and righteousness. Now, we stand here alone. You know, this statement destroyed it. The platform that many Sharia people stand in the belief that we to be blamed for the evil doing we do. And we will be rewarded for the goodness we do. Even the last khutbah, sermon, Friday in the mosque, I heard the same thing. As it, 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 we have the, 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 the brain, the mind. Therefore, we can choose to do good or evil. It is as if we have freedom, not tied up by destination, predestination, which is the sixth pillar of faith. Is it true that we can decide what to do and bypass Allah that has no say and that what we do, those are our own creation. This is crazy. Everything you do, Allah knows, otherwise is not wise. Everything you do, He approve it. Everything you do or don't want to do, he approve it. Otherwise, he's useless. We can bypass him. We can do everything by our own self. We don't need him. We don't need his approval. 
We don't need to say inna lillahi wa inna wa We don't need. We don't need to hold on takdir. The good and the bad come from him. That is a sixth principle of faith. We don't need. And the way these people preaching, I don't know what to say. Huh? We got the mind. We can decide what is good, what is bad. <laughs> so, okay, you decide good. So that decision is yours, not Allah's. So this one decision is outside the power of Allah. And that is crazy, man. I have the choice. I'm going to do bad or do good. I have the choice. Tell them to the drug addicts. Ask them to give up. They have a choice. Tell them to the woman. Tell them that you may throw away your gender as a female. I think they can do that. Or tell a black man you can do away with your skin color. You think they can do that? You can't. Can you tell the fish now you don't need to swim in the water. You can walk on land. Are you sure? They got the choice. Tell the bird, okay, you don't need to fly. Now you can glide on the water like a motorboat everywhere you go. And they got the chance. So predestinations is the sixth pillar of faith. Rasulullah said that if you think you can change it, for sure you'll be in hell. Who can't? So who inspired these people to become evil or become good? It's him. He said, I inspired him righteousness and righteousness. It's a, it's a command in, in, in the uh, Quran. So, oh, you have the, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. You have the capacity to choose the good or the evil. You have God given you the mind to choose, to think. <laughs> so you can bypass him. So the decision is yours, not him. So this decision, he did not create. You create. How great are you? So this decision, you did not get his approval. You approve it. You, make, you do it. You decide you do it. You bypass him. And what he said in the Quran, how can he think and decide, damn him. Hmm. You think carefully. Am I talking nonsense? You hear these lectures talking. As if God is not there. As if God has no power over them. Right. So if the decision you make not from him, so the decision is your creation. You are God, equal to Allah. Because you created this. This is my idea. <laughs> this is my idea, oh my God. So the idea is your creation. So you are the creator. So the idea, you bypass Allah. The, the idea Allah didn't know. 
your idea is not listed in the low mafos. <laughs> so that far, as I say, Sufism is a higher knowledge. See? And that's why, Alhamdulillah, I prepared you all for the future. When all these things will crop up, when our children become more brilliant in the first world, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, then come the questions. So, as I said, look at the spring again, the spiritual spring. See? The, the good, the bad come from the black dot, you see? The good, the bad come from that black dot. I will return to the black dot. From him and to him we return. So, it control everything, the subtle self. It control everything, be it the visible, the invisible. be it physical, non-physical, spiritual, you know, all this he controls. He doesn't share his control with anyone. Okay? So, please, as a Sufi, do not make this mistake. Thinking you think, you decide. God didn't know. God has nothing to play here, no role here, don't, okay? Actually, what have been predestined to you, you will have it. You say, oh, you, you can listen, oh, we can change our destination by Dua. Dua can change predestination. So the du'a your idea, not inspired by Allah, not come from the Lord Mahfuz. It's your idea. You created the idea, you created the du'a. Allah has no role in that. You are the creator. I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> it's the creator. <laughs> right. You don't. Ah. And then the changes, you cause the changes. How great are you? <laughs> I don't. Ah. I change the faith. My, my, look, my faith. Wow, like real. So this changing of your faith is not in the low mafus. Allah is unwise. He didn't know. And the change you can bulldoze through without his approval. Right? No, my friend. The, the, the idea that comes to your mind is inspired by him. And what you did already listed in the law of Mahfuz. And it says here, you will do what you have to do and you will receive this predestination for what you have to do. That's it. As Radeka had shown one time, the fishes swimming freely in the oceans. That ocean, my friend, we can deem it as predestination. So even though the swim, the fishes swim freely in the ocean, they didn't know they are they are swimming inside predestination. 
the ocean is like a predestination. But those who know will tell you, hey, look, not that you want to do, you have to do. Why? Because it predestined or it listed in the law of Mahfuz. And Allah is most wise, most knowing, most powerful. So when he said, Kun, many billion years ago, all this already written in the Lord Mahfuz. Waiting for the time, right time, right place, and your existence, and you will do that listed in the Lord Mahfuz. There is no choice. That's why right. for those who have knowledge and faith, they don't talk rubbish that you can do things without uh, uh, do thing by by passing Allah. No way. Okay. Some say we have to do first, and then Allah will help. <laughs> when you're doing that first, that is not within Allah knowledge. That you bypass whatever approval needed. That is not listed in the law of mafus. No, everything listed. That's why for those who have knowledge and faith, they will say, indeed, you will tarry like dancing within Allah's decree to what he has predestined, you will dance inside there, not coming out to the day of resurrection, until the day of resurrection. Then you stop acting. Okay. So be careful, my dear brother. We Sufi will never claim that idea ours, that energy ours, that work ours. We don't own anything. He doesn't sh share his ownership with anyone. And that's where the downfall of the Jew Sharia and the Christian Sharia. People just cannot correlate the actual thing that being taught to them, conflicted with what they see before them. Let me ask you, do you think Palestine got a choice not to be killed day by day? No choice. It's predestined. And will Israel stop? No. Predestined. And when do they stop? When it's in predestination, it's stated it will stop. Israel will stop and no more. Palestine killed. But when is this predestination will come? We don't know. But I'm sure it's there because nothing is eternal except Allah. All this war, even the first world war, the second world war, worse than this ended. Only Allah is eternal. Or oh, his subtle self and great self, eternal. But other creations are not. Okay. So, be careful. Be wiser. Walk cautiously. Do not disrespect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lord, for your own glory, this Jesus say, have mercy upon the works of your hand, the works of your hand. That is the black dot I show you. That is the hand. The subtle one. That's the hand. You see, Jesus, the works of your hand. 
he didn't see the works of your creation, the works of your hand. And on the day of resurrection, the whole of the earth will be grabbed by his hand and the heaven will be rolled up in his right hand. So one hell grabs the heavens, the other hand, uh, one hell, one hell and grabs the earth, the many earth or exoplanet or the universe and then the other hand, right hand, roll up the seven heaven. This hand here refers to the black dot, the subtle self. Here again, O oh Master, you have confessed before all Judea that God has no similitude like men. That means God is not like men. And now you have said that men receive from the hand of God. Accordingly, isn't that hand a similitude of man? Jesus answered, You are in error, O Matthew. And many have so erred, uh, not knowing the sense of the words. So, as a Sufi, we can see the esoteric meaning behind each word. We see things differently because we are Sufis. So we don't take it literally Allah's God hand. But you'll be surprised many who non-Sufi insisted that Allah got hands like us. But whereas in the Quran he is not uh, he cannot be uh, You cannot create him or visualize him. You can't. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah, what Allah is. Allah who is in control. Lam yali Allah. Not born or having father. Walam yakulhu ufwan. It's not. You cannot uh, compare him to anything. He said, incomparable. Yeah. So he cannot be having similitude with man. And this also, uh, can we, we can lack it with a belief in the concept of Nur Muhammad. That half of Allah Nur or light began half of Muhammad Nur. Now that is already having similitude of man. Because half of his soul of all his light is also half of the light of Muhammad. So he has similitude of man. It's a grave error. And what said God by Isaac that the prophet but that so far as the heaven is distant from the earth, so far, the earth and the heaven, so far, even so are the ways of God. Distant from the ways of man, you cannot understand him. And the thought of God from the thought of man different. In actual fact, our thought are not our thought. Our thought are his thought inspired for us to carry out. All occurrences and incidences are but Allah's will as he's the creator who plans everything, that, that black dot, just now I show you, where the spiral coming out. The spiral, you can 
put as the occurrences and incidences that come from the black thought and that thought is the subtle self, the hand, the creator who plans everything. Okay? Because that's subtle self is part of Allah. So what it does, the same Allah does. That's part of like my finger is part of me. What my finger did is what actually I did. Same. Okay. So every one of us have been this destined dweller of hell or paradise. The route to achieve our destiny has been made easy for us. Now, again here. Because of this interpretation of this hadith, they not take consideration of the non-believers around us. It causes unhappiness and blaming Allah for being unfair. Being unfair. They say, why are we destined to be born unbelievers? Destined to live as unbelievers according to your destination, predestination. And then you put us in hell when we comply your wishes, the predestination. 100%. Why do you put us in hell? Are you fair? You what it means here? Because you relate it to the Quran verse, the life in this world is amusement and play. So when everyone, when, when you have the destined dweller of hell, that is your role, role play. Not that you're going into hell. Or you are given the uh, role of a paradise dweller. That's the role. Not that you will enter paradise. Otherwise, see, that's why they're clamoring now that Allah is cruel, unfair. But because it's wrong definition, it's just amusement and play. Whereas the kampong of hereafter are waiting for everyone. And the rules to achieve our destiny has been made easy for us, this predestination. Is Allah cruel? No. You are given a role, a script, you become a clown. So he created the world with a role of clown in it. You give the script to be murderer. So he created the role of murderer in the script. So the route to achieve our destiny made easy, but it's a role play. Role play. But instead of seeing this role play, we take it that Allah had been cruel by predestined people to be criminals, murderers, rapists, and many more, and then put them in hell. Where is the fairness? So it is terrible, no? The Allah had the Quran say, they did not respect me as they should. Yes, you talk nonsense. Okay? Because your interpretation is to put black mark on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot do so. Anyway, if you have any question, you can reserve for next week. I'll be, inshallah, in Samarang. And 
can answer whatever question. And I'm there. I'll be 25th to 29th, inshallah. And even the scientists confirm the law of nature form a system that already extremely fine-tuned, 100% already fine-tuned. You cannot disturb it. <laughs> that is the law of Mahfuz. That is predestined. Already fine-tuned. You cannot change it. Even Allah say, my plan is firm. You cannot change it. Because a little changes or a little change bring about disastrous, unequivocal, whatever we have known, the disaster in this world. It's greater, destroyed possibility of everything. You can't change the quantum of oxygen in the world. Quantum of water, raindrop, sunshine, already fine-tuned. If we are located 20% nearer to Mars, we will be frozen. If we are created 20% nearer to the sun, we will all be extingu extinguished by the fire of the sun. We are fine-tuned that we are in between, so we are not affected on both sides. Fine-tuned, you know. So you cannot change it. So you think you have, oh, my idea. <laughs> you change it, everybody died. Right? My idea, big idea. <laughs> And here again, again, scientists, it is hard to imagine how free will can operate. Even our behavior is determined what by everything around us. So it seems that we are no more than biological machines and that free will is just an illusion. You have a car. You drive it. You have a bicycle, you cycle it. You don't have, you walk. You don't have a car, you take private trans uh, public transport. You a woman, you behave as a woman. Your man behave as a man. You children behave as children. You see, these are law that exist that we can see, but we comply with. Right? For normal people, they eat with their hand. For normal people, they walk, they didn't jump. <laughs> These are things that being laid down naturally, like a law, natural law, that we don't think, but we comply. We drink with our mouth. We don't drink through our nose, our ear. It's not a law, natural law. Okay. And that's why uh, Professor Stephen Hawking say, if we, if, if, if there is already abundance of this law, we can call law, natural law, abundant. And we comply it, comply with them, consciously or unconsciously, we comply. So where is the free will? You see a door, you enter. You don't enter from a window. <laughs> you see rice, you eat. You don't take the rice to put over your face. See the law there. We, we, we didn't notice. But it's there. There are so many of this natural law that we abide without thinking. So how can they be free will? And therefore, Shia Abdul Qadir say, no, you have no choice. Whatsoever 
in the matter. Every matter you have no choice because predestined. You have to do it. Or don't do it. Predestined. Okay. You have no choice. And even Satan, <laughs> Satan, he say, I only can seduce those only you listed for me, O oh Lord. <laughs> that means if Allah listed this guy, you can, you can, you know, seduce that guy. You can seduce. So not the whole world become drug addict. Only those listed. Not whole world become alcoholic. Those listed. And not a whole world become addict to gambling, sex, and so on. Only those listed. And those listed, you can only get out of it if it is unlisted by Allah. Not that you think you want, you can come out from the list. No. Allah must take you out from the list. Then you stop. The addiction you can stop. Otherwise, no way. That's why when the drug addicts were released from the drug rehabilitation center, when they were coming out from the gate, the caretaker will tell them, well, congratulations, you are leaving now. Ah, by the way, when you'll be coming back, <laughs> you have no confidence. You will come back very soon. So they say, ah, congratulations, you are released today. By the way, when you're coming back. <laughs> Unless you are unlisted by Allah, you can try whatever you deem you try. You cannot get out of it. And even what you tried already stated in the law of office. That it fail also, also, also the attempts fail or delisted. Yeah. That's why Satan himself agree. I can only seduce those you have listed for me. Nothing more. And the subtle self. Everything else is within it, inside it. Everything else is inside it. Therefore, it encompasses, encompasses everything is inside it. And therefore, he must be aware of whatever thing is in his hand. <laughs> in his hand. <laughs> that even he encompasses every space and particle. Professor Abu Ahad Dawood. And therefore he's aware. And therefore, now we go, we're knowing that the next thing you must always fill up your mind remembering Allah. Not only in worship, after worships, and your daily life. It's in the Quran. When do prayer, remember me. After prayer, sit down, standing or lying down, remember me. And when you're doing your work, you no know, business, you all believe business, you learn your work, occupation, what not, remember. And Rasulullah confirmed, remembering Allah, our zikrullah, is the highest form of worship. Highest than donating silver and gold, higher than jihad itself. Okay. So, my dear friends, companions, Endeavor to be consistently remembering him when you are already on this third level. 
endeavor steadfast to remember him all the time practice it until it become normal for you okay so when you remember allah you are the only one in your mind the remember of allah therefore you are blind to anything except him the remember of allah and what outside will not be able to enter the inside of your mind even certain say i cannot seduce those who all the time, all the time remembering allah you can see that okay. now uh, i stop here